I was hiding behind the grasses. Speaking of grasses, for years we've been telling you to murder your lawn, kill your grass, put something else in, go low water. Well, there are exceptions and those are ornamental grasses like this beautiful miscanthus I'm standing next to. Grasses add so much life to the garden. They've got this vertical accent that a lot of other plants we use don't have. They have a variety of foliage colors from variegated forms to dark reds. And the other thing that's wonderful is they're animated. The slightest breeze starts them moving in the garden. They bring life to the garden. And they also attract pollinators and beneficial insects and lots of stuff that we want in our garden. So let's have a little tour. Um, we'll try to create a top 10 list and see if uh, there's anything you want to put in your own garden. The reason I love coming to Seaside Gardens here in Carpinteria is that there's just such a beautiful range of plants and we've got a great combination here. So how do we actually go about using these ornamental grasses and grass-like plants in the garden? Great combination. We have red fountain grass here. This is a form of penicetum and this is not a grass. This is a local um, California rush uh, called Juncus. And what's going on right here is we've got tremendous amount of contrast even though they're both grassy types of plants. Obviously the dark foliage color, the form of the flowers on this uh, gives us a nice kind of somber background and the fine textured leaves of the juncus, a little bit gray, a little bit green, create a beautiful contrast. So even if there weren't flowers, it's important to create contrast in the garden year round. Flowers are fleeting and they're not always putting on a big show. So having something stable like this in the garden is a real boon. Not all grasses are towering and not all grasses are mowed like lawns, but this makes a great ground cover. Uh, this is blue fescue, a form of festuca. This one's called Elijah Blue. And what I love about it is the color is such a wonderful contrast, but it can also be planted in masses. Yes, we're talking masses of grasses and cover large areas of this. So if you've got some darker green plants, or plants with other foliage colors, this makes a great backdrop for it uh, to, to play off of. So consider Festuca as one of your ground covers. Very low water use, uh, needs no maintenance, and it even grows some beautiful little flowers over time. Okay, on the top 10 list, so all you got is a veggie garden. Good for you, nice to be growing your food, or you have a big pot with just some herbs. Want to get vertical? Was that Olivia Newton-John? Yeah, want to get vertical. How about chives, leeks, anything in the onion family? Also lemongrass, if you like doing some Southeast Asian cuisine. Uh, don't have any here to show you, but it's a beautiful grass. So grow it, eat it, and then brush your teeth or use a mouthwash. On my top 10 list for all native gardens, uh, if that's the trick you're after, this is Lamus Canyon Prince. It's a type of ryegrass. Uh, has this beautiful gray-blue sort of color, um, and it spreads slowly by runners. It's not particularly invasive, but uh, keep the watering on the low side. Give it deep, occasional waterings, and you'll be rewarded for years. If it starts looking shaggy, cut it all the way to the ground. It'll just smile and come right back. In the last few years, plant propagators have discovered Lomandra and given us a tremendous variety of different forms of this. And this is one of my favorites. This is called Lomandra Breeze. And it's uh, characterized by this sort of lemony yellow green color, which is fabulous in a shady area like this. When we're in shade and we have dark colored foliage, they really don't stand out. But the lighter the foliage, uh, the more presence they have. So consider Lomandra. Um, in full sun, this plant will stay a bit lower, but it is one of my favorites, so I'm adding this to the top 10 list. Not a grass, but definitely grass-like. This is one of dozens of New Zealand flax. This dark purple one is gonna get quite a bit bigger, but it gives us a nice tropical effect. I've used them in Mediterranean-style gardens. Um, it's just a real standout because of its dark foliage. Extra special treat, combine it with something that's a bright yellow green and you get fabulous contrast. This grass is indispensable in any garden. If you're running out of the house and you forgot to put on makeup and you realize your eyebrows don't look very good, this is perfect. Looks like you got a caterpillar on each eye. Uh, this is a California native. It's called Budalua and it's got the cutest name. It's called Blonde Ambition. Um, 
it's not real showy as the grass itself, the foliage uh, just kind of fills in the garden, but when these flowers come in summer and they persist for months, it's just a wonderful little bit of animation in the garden. And when you get a little bit of breeze, like that, they put on a wonderful show. More grassy plants, great for narrow beds uh, when you want to have a little bit of flare in a small space. Um, I've got this in my garden right now, grows about knee high, maybe a tiny bit higher than that, has some beautiful little blue flowers on it, and sometimes you're rewarded with these shiny little blueberries, but this is Dianella Casa Blue, spelled with two S's, Casa Blue, and this is another Dianella, a variegated form, which I really like to use underneath um, partially shaded areas, uh, just because it's animated, the variegation wakes up the spot. Add it to your top 10 list. There are beautiful, wonderful fountain grasses you should invite into your garden, and there's a few that you should not. Uh, just to beware, driving down Foothill, Cathedral Oaks, and a lot of other neighborhoods, you'll see a green-leafed relative of this with a similar flower, not as purple, um, and going up San Marcos Pass, and they have become a weed and a pest. So please, if that's showing up in your garden, get rid of it, cut the flowers off, and be prepared for a few years of battling it because it'll continue to recede. Uh, but it's a menace. On a happier note, we have Penicetum Eaton Canyon. Um, wonderful, fine, delicate look. It stays pretty small, gets about two feet, maybe three feet high. Flowers in the summertime. Um, one caution with this and many of the other uh, fountain grasses is you want to cut them all the way to the ground when they start looking really shabby. The reason for that is this foliage will go brown and next year the new foliage is going to try to come up through it so you're going to have a mix of dead leaves and beautiful purple leaves. So do yourself a favor, slash it to the ground, it's kind of fun to do. It'll open up and create space in your garden, that's really a good thing is to have a little bit of seasonal change. So uh, this particular fountain grass and many of the other grasses we've talked about today, some of the miscanthus, are all grasses that benefit from cutting down. If you're not sure, look them up, uh, but don't be timid. Just so we don't end up thinking that grasses are only for meadow type gardens or Mediterranean gardens, I'm in the middle of the succulent garden at Seaside and we're looking at this beautiful, it's called a Mexican grass tree. This is Dasilirion. So if you like the idea of having grassy, grass-like plants in your garden, this is the one for you. They gradually get a nice long trunk, uh, but for quite a few years, they'll just stay low with this beautiful little explosion. It's like fireworks in the garden. Very, very popular plant from South Africa. Again, not a grass. This is Cape Rush. This is the smallest version of it. This is called Chondropetalum uh, El Campo. There are others. There's one called Elephantium, I think it is, that gets about as tall as me. So be sure if you, uh, if you like this plant and you want to have it in your garden, make sure you really understand its mature size. Every plant grows up to a certain size and we really can't stop that. This is not a plant that wants to be pruned. So uh, pick your battles, as we say, but it's a beautiful plant. What I love about it most is it's got these little brown bands along the, uh, the joints of the plant, which just add this wonderful warmth to it. Shady areas, uh, Asian style gardens, uh, some morning sun, no afternoon heat, and you'll be able to keep these a little on the dry side. Not particularly drought tolerant, but uh, they're, they're not that fussy. Uh, this is a plant called Liriope. That's what I call it. Other people call it Liriope. Um, this is a beautiful form with a variegated yellowish foliage, and you notice the little purple flower. This is common on all forms of Liriope. This is another called Silver Dragon, also flowering, narrower leaf, and a light amount of variegation. And if you're familiar with an old standby called Mondo Grass, that's also um, in the same family group as these. But these are very nice effect, and they do spread moderately. They're not invasive. Just keep the soil cultivated around them, and a few plants will fill in a bed in a little bit of time. So we just looked at that big fat uh, formium with the dark purple leaves. These are a few others that work in much smaller places. One of, the, one of them is Tom Thumb, the other one is Jester. They don't get as big. Uh, they're very comfortable in pots for years. And then there's another very similar to them. You wouldn't know they were different plants, but they're not at all related. These are cordylines and they're related to your Dracaena house plants, also in multiple colors and very happy in a small pot or a small garden bed um, for a long period of time. So 
give these a try. Another favorite California native where you've really got some space. This is Muhlenbergia rigens or deer grass. Um, it doesn't necessarily attract deer. I'm not sure why it has that name. Uh, its finest feature is these wonderfully straight, stiff flowers uh, that start coming on toward the end of summer. But eventually this plant will get, oh, about chest high um, and benefits from being cut completely to the ground. Uh, a little extra water is fine, but they'll get by with uh, summer dry. They'll just show their dryness a little bit. But Muhlenbergia is a great plant and really great habitat. Uh, good insects like to nest inside and birds are attracted to it. So consider putting this out on a, a nice big slope outside of fire areas.